I just got done watching You Season 4 Part 1. Yes, I said Part 1 because this is going to be my non-spoiler review for the first five episodes of this brand new season premiering on February 9th. Now, the next part of the season actually premieres on March 9th, a month later, and I'm chomping at the bits to get those next five episodes because I loved You Season 4. And I say that as someone who I enjoyed Season 1, Season 2 was a little bit disappointing to me, it just felt very repetitive from stuff that we had already seen before, with some new twists and turns added in there. And then Season 3 comes out, and I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, this is actually kind of fun, kind of garbage at times, but overall fun, and I enjoyed Season 3 for what it was. But then I kind of rolled my eyes at like, okay, we're doing another season. How are you going to make this interesting? Now he's stalking this girl that he met in season three that ran away from everything. And I'm here to tell you that season four flips the entire script. And it's actually really interesting because after being spurned by his latest love, serial killer and stalker, Joe Goldberg hides out in jolly old England under the fake name Jonathan Moore. And in this entire thing, he's a professor now. He kind of gets pushed into this rich circle with all these rich people. And alongside of there, there is someone who's stalking him and knows who he is and may be trying to blackmail him along the way. And that concept, because I didn't know what the concept was going into this until I'd watched the first episode. I'm like, this is actually kind of brilliant. I love that they're kind of overall ditching some of the stuff that they left off in season three. And I'm kind of curious to see if they bring that back at all because they do address it and I'll, and I'll talk about that. But overall, from what they're going about, I'm more interested in this show than I've ever been. And it's kind of giving me vibes of Dexter, like the great aspects of Dexter. And if you watch Dexter, you know it had its highs and its lows, but you finally has its highest season yet. The rest of season four is just as good as part one. We are in store for the best season yet. And I'm ready to say so far, this is the best season yet of you. But before we get any further into this review, I do want to mention that this is a non-spoiler review. Once again, I will be pretty vague when it comes down to the entire series and within talking about performances and plot points, because this is the show that you want to be surprised by because in a way it's kind of a who done it and who's kind of blackmailing him and it's fun to piece that along the way but adding in there if you're new here and you like talking movies and tv make sure to hit that like and subscribe button i cover all those sorts of things over here on a daily basis planning that after you season four part two does drop i will be ranking the entire you seasons thus far but without further ado Let's get into this review. And starting with my pros, the main thing I want to give a shout out to is Penn Badgley. I've actually really come to adore him as an actor. I think, again, U Season 1 I wasn't the highest on. I liked it. U Season 2, okay, I kind of liked it, but I also had a lot of grievances with it. Season 3 and continuing on, I've started to like the show a little bit more. And Penn's performance in here is actually one of the more interesting aspects for me. Because while it's him in London with this rich circle. He doesn't really have any friends. He doesn't have anyone to really go off of. He doesn't have a love interest per se in the season going in or someone that he can really connect to and give this chemistry vibe to. There's obviously certain people he does meet along the way. Again, I have to stay a little bit vague with that, but for the most part, it's Joe's story. Like it's him by himself talking with himself and having his thoughts all alone. And I feel like it's the most that they've ever done that. Some people might get annoyed by that at first. I was like, okay, this is a little bit too much until you kind of realize that he's all alone in this instance. And for me, I found that to be one of the most intriguing aspects of season four was the fact that Penn Badgley really much is having to act off himself. But adding in there as well, giving a shout out to some of the performances such as Charlotte Ritchie, who plays Kate, one of his neighbors. That is actually one of my favorite characters in here. At first, I didn't really like her, but the way that in the dynamics that they give to this character, specifically in the writing, is actually like one of the most things that kind of humanizes Penn's character a little bit more because I've always had the grievance that I don't care about Joe as a character. I get it, we've seen his past, I get it that he's had a screwed up past, but in the end of the day, he is a serial killer and he's crazy. Like he is crazy in a lot of different avenues. This is the first season that I actually feel like the show is starting to humanize him a little bit more to where we can actually kind of cheer him on. To where, in the end of the day, no matter how his story ends, it should not end happily. It's the same thing with Dexter, is that he is a serial killer. He's killing bad people, 
And Ben has definitely killed people that should not have died because they weren't bad. He's killed bad people, but overall he's killed people that definitely were, again, should not have died. And, and that's some of my instances where I do feel it's a little bit hard to humanize a character like this, but this is the first time where I'm like, okay, I'm actually invested in his character. Yeah, they're trying to humanize him. Do I feel completely emotionally attached to him? No, but I actually feel attached to the story going on here. And again, I think Charlotte Ritchie's character, Kate, is actually one of the biggest aspects of that entire thing. As alongside the likes of Lucas Gage, Steve, Stefan Hagen, Ed Spielers, Tilly Keeper, and really much the rest of this group that he's involved in. All of them have these little nuances that you really can get involved with. And for me, we're one of the biggest surprises of the entire season. Now, diving into here a little bit more, it's the story here. Someone is stalking Joe this time around. Someone is that you. And I love the twist and the turn on that because my favorite thing about season three was the fact that he kind of had a partner in crime. And I was a little bit worried going into the season that we weren't going to have that avenue. I loved Love as a character. I thought she was phenomenal. I thought the performance was great. But for me, this is one of those seasons that I feel like you went out on such a high note in season three. So how are you going to do that with season four? And while there are certain things in season four that, again, happen and you kind of roll your eyes at and you're like, okay, really? Okay, this is going on. For the most part, the story here is actually really intriguing. You are playing this great game of who done it, who is this person, who is the motives, and as everything comes together, you start to believe it, and once you actually figure it out, it feels like the perfect transition into a part two, and I'm actually curious to see if the writers had transitioned that or if this was just a decision they had made after the first season because this great little cliffhanger makes me more excited to see what happens next specifically because now i feel like the entire story has shifted and it makes for a great cliffhanger at the end of this one one that makes you again eager to see what's next this is quality television at its finest making you season four again Honestly, my favorite season so far until I see what else is to come again. The back half could be terrible, and then I'm like, okay, this is the worst season yet, but it's just all going to come down to those last five episodes. But I really had a fun time piecing together who is it going to be, who is it not going to be. And well, again, once you kind of piece it together and you're like, I'm pretty sure it's this person, and revelations start to happen in the final episode of part one, you're going... All right, yeah, this is awesome. Overall, with that season, that's about as much as I can say without getting into full spoilers. I really like the writing this season. I think it's, again, if you like you, you're going to love this season. If you've never been a fan of you, maybe this won't be your cup of tea still. Maybe it won't win you back. But in general, I love what they're doing with the characters. I love the fact that they twisted and turned the story into more of a whodunit type of thing and that Joe Goldberg is the one having to try and figure this out. There's certain fun gadgets and certain things that play out in here that, again, that you would expect in you, but You Season 4 Part 1 is a fantastic star and so far it is my favorite you season yet hopefully the back half can continue that and i can't wait for it to be released again in march this season is now out i think as the time of this recording it comes out on february 9th so definitely start binging it you're going to love it and with all that said so far i'm going to give this season an a Really surprised by how much I'm enjoying this season. I've become a U fan. I can't believe I'm saying that. But thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. You guys are really all the best. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, I'll see you when part two comes out. Or if you want to enjoy some other videos, I have a ton that come out every single day. So of course, until next time, stay classy.